uh, I'm here on this Google Hangout with uh, with Peter Cobley, the commercial director of Home James. Um, I, we just wanted to have this chat to, um, to find out a bit more about what you do with Home James and also your involvement with with Sascon. So maybe over over to you, Peter, if you give us a bit of insight into uh, you and, and what you do on a day to day basis, that might be a good start for ten. Um, well, thanks very much, James, for inviting me to talk about Home James and Home Group and Sascon. I'll deal with myself. Um, I'm the commercial director for Home James, which is a leading full service digital agency, about 50 employees, uh, with offices in Leeds and uh, London. And the nature of the business is to very, very simply provide full service digital. Um, services to clients uh, that we look after. So these would range from Jack to Thornton's, Kingfisher with brands like B&Q, through to Screwfix, through to gambling companies such as 188Bet or Victor Chandler or for that matter um, Stanley Bet. And the nature of what we do uh, can be neatly divided into strategy, you know, really discussing with the client what their needs are, identifying the business objectives, commercial objectives, and then translating that into how they would work to reach their consumer ultimate client online. Now, interestingly enough, Home James um, is part of a bigger group. Um, so within the group, we have over 100 employees, and the business deals in offline, a lot of offline work as well. So a good example might be the creation of television advertising for a number of uh, uh, clients. Um, and on the offline side, um, we might be dealing with Asda, Weetabix, and people like that, for example. What's interesting about Home James that I think is unique, um, and what led me to go from being a you know, being a publisher, coming from a publisher background, for example, six years at the Yahoo office, running the Manchester Yahoo office, is very simply that Home offers a very integrated approach. So we're very good from a retail perspective of, of talking to a client like Asda, looking at their needs, but then not getting compartmentalised uh, into the various channels or all the jargon words that a lot of advertising and media people use. What we do is get down to core basics, and I think some of that is, is driven by the Yorkshire ethos of this Leeds-based firm, which is straight talking, which is what do you do, what do you sell, who do you sell it to, and so forth. Then we'll start to look at the business as a whole, uh, the consumer needs and so forth and so on, way before we'll get into, for example, strategy or planning or talking about channels online and offline. So whilst I work for Home James and as, as the commercial director, effectively the sales director, my touch points within the group might be talking about billboards, gondolas, ambient media, and, and I'm trying to provide a holistic um, approach to um, a client's advertising and marketing and that's why we've got such a good retention in terms of staff and um, clients and why we get nominated for awards regularly. No, really interesting stuff. I, you know, I think I've seen recently a lot of agencies that are I suppose you know full service are really coming into their coming to their own um, and you know it's, it's great to have certain specialists in certain areas but likewise media doesn't exist in in isolation it's that's just not how it is and you know, I've seen quite a few social media agencies say that pop up just specialising in social, when you know social crosses all all spectrums of media really. You know, you could have you could have a Twitter feed on a, a piece of advertising, a boarding, or, or whatever. So it it doesn't make sense just to siphon it off in silos. And it's you know a, a practical uh, it's a practical offering that I think clients really um, warm to because that, that's their, that, that their business isn't cut up into neat little chunks. Yeah, I mean, if you look at um, our catch line, it's Home James, driving performance, um, and that's what we do, and that's why we're retail specialists. We try, we're not, we're not against labelling things like SEO or PPC or social media. We do all of those. We do web build, we do very technical work. Um, the business can be neatly split into the strategy side, the planning side, the technical side, uh, the media side. Um, on what you class as the non-media side, and across those areas, we might be dealing with search engine optimization, social media, right across to wireframing or creating information architecture for a website that Asda.com Asda might need. The point is, 
that whilst these labels like social media have got to be used, we shy away from them because we don't want to sell the client social media. We don't want to sell the client SEO. We don't want to sell the client PPC. What we're selling the client is a solution, ultimately a marketing solution. You know, it's no different from, um, you know, somebody coming into the offline agency, the offline part of the business and saying, um, I'm looking to launch a cheese brand. What, what can you do? We're not suddenly going to start talking about TV or press advertising. You know, we need to identify what is the brand. You know, you create the brand. And that's what we're very, very, very good at and why we've done so well with uh, a number of the brands and, and uh, that we look after. And whilst we're retail-led, we, we, we re resell is a broad swathe that might encompass finance right across to travel. Um, I think the clients like us because we taught the language of the client, you know, the marketing manager, the e-commerce manager, the PR manager and so forth, we sit down with them and really look at the numbers and the data and, and draw insights from that. Then we'll start to look at, how, you know, how to execute what the business does and get across to existing customers and, and recruit new customers. And again, we're not, again, I've got to emphasize the actual fact we do have to talk the language of the business. but. You know, when a client comes to us, we won't just simply say, there's a bit of PPC, there's a bit of SEO, there's a bit of social media, because to us, you're, you're just throwing the proverbial mud at the barn door. You've not identified what the client or the client's consumer or a customer wants. No, agreed. That sounds great, actually. A really great proposition. It's similar to my kind of approach where, you know, everything's insight-driven and you work out what a client's trying to achieve, who they're trying to deal with, um, and come up with something to, to fit that. So... I think that's a fairly sensible, sensible approach. Yeah. <laughs> I like the uh, the mudslinging at the wall analogy because it's it's true, isn't it? You know, people have teams and they say, "Well, how can I? You know, what what can I sell in here? I'll bring the PPC guy and I'll bring the search guy and I'll bring the social guy." And you know, people try and fill time. And really, what you're doing is you, you, you're providing a, a solution based on client need, which is great. It's good stuff. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd say, Stan, I think that's what's made the agency so successful and so big. We are a bit of a sleeping giant. We don't necessarily go out and bang the drum PR wise. Um, but you know, clients range from Asda, Weetabix, McVitie's, um, Jet2, who I've already mentioned, right through to Kingfisher, you know, looking after brands like Screwfix, through to TradePoint, um, you know, right across to Hallmark, as in the cards people. So we we're good at what we do. Um, but at the same time, we're also hungry. What makes home interesting as a group is that we're still ambitious, and we're, but, but, but in a very northern way. Um, and by that, I mean we're, we're always willing to learn. So, for example, a number of us attended a recent Google event last week in Manchester, where Google was talking about its products um, over at the corporate facility for the Lancashire County Cricket Ground. Um, it's, it's products, it's developments, it's knowledge. So we, we really do hoover up all of that information, and, and we're very transparent as well, which I think is our, our, our other saving grace, and that the clients see us as being fully transparent. And last but not least, you know, it's Yorkshire business, so you count the pennies and the pounds look after themselves. It's all about data. So we're very good at, you know, analyzing, drawing insights from from from, from that information. Um, and making make that making what can be quite complex in the digital sphere manageable. Um, because let's face facts, a lot of our clients are very time poor and need an agency they can trust that are transparent and can draw insights from that versus them versus the client staying up till 12 at night trying to crunch that data. No, that sounds really interesting. I think um, at some point I have to pop over and uh, take, a, take a look around the agency to see how you do it because um, it seems like a similar sort of approach to the way I like to do things really. And I don't like to deal with people who you know fly by night you know, seat seat our pants, marketers. Although we all, you know, we're all marketers. We're all flown by the seat of our pants at, at some point. But you, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying there. Um, I mean, is is there anything else you want to cover off on on home, James? Because from my point of view, I've got a good feel for the business, and um, you know, it's a it's a big business with great clients that maybe hasn't shouted as as loud as it could do about some of its its successes. Um, but you know, really imp impressive business. So that's the impression that I got. Yeah, that's, I'd agree with you. Your best bet is, is, is if somebody's really interested, just go to homejames.co.uk, have a look at the website. We've just launched a new website that, that you know has case studies on there, espouses what we do. I'm not going to oversell the agency. My advice is if you want to find out about us, get in touch with me and ultimately um, 
what you'll find is that I'll happily put you in touch with our clients. Sounds good, sounds good. Okay, well, um, maybe if we cover a bit off about Sascon now then. So... Yeah, Sascon is an interesting one in the... It was always going to be successful without sounding arrogant. Being one of the founders, and I use the term founder in a very loose sense without sounding pompous, um, there was a group of us in the business that had known each other for years that recognised the fact that the North is a powerhouse um, of digital. Um, but there was still this gravitas or this leaning towards London. And again, not trying to call these exhibitions or conferences but the likes of S, uh, SMX or SES or whatever. They're always London centric and London bias and London this and London that. And we're not taking into account the sheer wealth of talent and innovation of entrepreneurial behavior that occurs up north because you have to be more hungry, more ready. And I would argue possibly more entrepreneurial than London. Um, London to an extent digitally is mature whereas up north I would argue is still growing and, and by north I mean Glasgow, Edinburgh, Leeds, Newcastle, um, Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham uh, and Dublin as well and you know there's a powerhouse there of talents what we wanted to do was bring um, a conference to the north with a slight northern flavour to it but international that would allow a showcasing of local talent and international talent. So if you picture it as a sort of bilateral thing, one, the international talent can educate the North, and two, the North can edu educate the North and the international talent that's there. And, and it was a mix, but Sascom was designed to not be polished. And I think that's quite crucial there, because a lot of these events of high ticket value, very staged, very salesy, and um, there is a question mark about them. We wanted a situation whereby people could come along, actually learn, not feel threatened, not feel they had to polish their language or, or, or appear to know everything, feel comfortable to take clients with them, feel comfortable for people to talk to their clients from other agencies. So it becomes like a maelstrom of, of knowledge, of sharing, and so on. Now, Sascom, um, in 2013, will be the fourth event. And what's exciting for me is the actual leverage we've got now. Third event was earlier this year in May. It was a great success. And what it says is on the label, SASCOM, which stands for Search, Analytics and Social Media Conference. So it still sticks to its core values, which I think is important, but it's not too shy to look at elements that feed off those three core elements. We don't want the event to become purely digital because that's just just too wide. Um, so I think the founders that created SASCOM also made it work, not just by creating it and working hard, but by just letting it, letting it have its own legs and grow the way it's gone. So for me, I think if someone was to say to me, what's SASCOM? Yes, it's a conference on search, social media and analytics, but it's also a networking event, a meeting event, a, you know, becoming friends with people in the business, the means of, 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 of actually talking about the North and shifting some of that power, and I mean power in a very loose way from, from the London scene. So that's my view on it. But the, one of the crucial things is it's not polished. Yes, it runs on railway tracks. It has to do. It's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a paying conference. I hasten to add it's not, not for profit. All the money gets reinvested. No one makes any money out of it. But at the same time, it's not polished in the sense of, oh, another conference. No, I think it's, um, from my experience of attending Sascon over several years, it's a really strong conference um, in the north of England. And you're right, it's it's specialist because it's, it's search analytics and social media, but it's got something for the client side markets here. And, you know, we've all had conversations about well, how can we target more client side markets here? And actually, I think it sits well being niche. Um, but you know, it's not too niche that it's it's it would fly over the heads of a of an internal, you know, marketing department. It doesn't go into it doesn't just focus on agency insights. Um, and you know, it's the, the the way it's structured now and the way it's grown means that there's a track, you know, with two, three, even you know, four tracks at sometimes. There's uh, there's there's usually something for for everybody there. Um, and then you know, mini Sascons around the corner as well, isn't it? In, early December which um, should be great we've got a, a 
great keynote that we haven't just announced yet. We're going to be announcing that early doors this week. So really looking forward to that. Um, but I do I do feel that there's quite a lot of traction with the event now, um, and it's it's entering entering into quite a key year in its life really, of not a, a breakthrough uh, year by any stretch because I think it's already has broken through. It's on the roster of of conferences, um, you know, internationally with delegates flying in from all over all over the world. Um, but there's, it does feel like that it's on the cusp of of really getting quite uh, quite a strong reputation for itself. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Um, we don't want SASCOM to go down the tried and tested route of becoming too pompous and elite or cliquey. Um, it's designed for publishers, it's designed for agencies, it's designed for clients, it's designed for the snotty-nosed green exec through to the jaded old fart like myself at 41. The whole point is it's it, it's a pick and mix as well, and that's why I think it's been successful and will be successful, because the people who put it together have been in the business for so long, they've seen more PowerPoint to sink the Titanic and so forth and so on. We, we, we don't want something that you're talked at. You don't want something that's a voice piece. We want something that's, that's a bit like stood in a, at a bar with a pint of bitter with somebody chatting about your business and a, you know, in a nice way. Um, so it's a social event as well, and, and I agree with you. The December mini SASCOM and the May main SASCOM now are on the map, and I would strongly recommend people to go to them because for the cost of what you pay relative to what you get, I think it's very good value. I think you're right, and um, you can get tickets. I don't know what, there's a link to. Oh, there's a feedback like there. Um, there's a link to. Um, where you can get the tickets from sascon.co.uk. Um, don't panic, I think, as selling tickets on their website. If I don't know what the URL is off the top of my head, but you can go there too. Um, you know, I think um, I've kind of covered off quite a, quite a lot of ground there today. I think that was useful. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm happy with the way the conversation's gone. So it's good to speak to you, Peter. So. Yeah, likewise, James. I mean, um, um, thanks very much for looking after the PR for SASCON. It's been brilliant, to say the least. Um, it's helped put the two events on the map. For me, all I can say is have a look at sascon.co.uk and just ask some of the founders. The names are there. We've been in the business for years. Check us out on LinkedIn. We'll tell you as it is. And if it doesn't work, I'll personally give you my money. Uh, not my, your money back. My money, your money. <laughs> Love it. There's a guarantee. Yes, good old salesman. All right, okay. Well, I'm going to end the broadcast. We can have a quick chat afterwards. Um, bye, everybody. Okay, bye-bye.